Hey everyone, in this video we are gonna be discussing another cool feature of GitHub which is the GitHub Copilot. It is an AI powered tool that acts as an additional virtual partner in the coding process. So in order to use it, I'm gonna head to my GitHub code spaces and I've already created a new code space. But if you don't have a code space, you can go to the link github.com slash code spaces and from here you can select this blank template. All right. All right, so the first thing in order to use GitHub Copilot is to install its extension inside our code space. So if you see this icon that says extensions, click on it. And in the search bar, you have to type Copilot. And it is going to provide you all these options. I'm going to go with the GitHub Copilot, which is the AI pair programmer. So once the extension is installed, you will see the GitHub Copilot icon shown over here. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and create a new file. I'm going to call it test.py. And here inside the file, firstly, I'm going to add the comments where I will explain what is going to happen inside this file. So I'm going to say a calculator that can add, subtract, multiply and divide. Okay, so I'm going to press the tab and all of this will be selected. So once you do that, now let's go ahead and you will see it will give you suggestions. So if you like the suggestion, you simply have to click on tab and it will continue providing you suggestions for the further code. So I'm going to do this and you can see that it has provided me suggestion for a function for addition, a function for subtraction, a function for multiplication and a function for division. And it has also provided me the option to define the main. So here I am defining the main and here it is also providing me the options for the prompt. So I'm simply going to go ahead and keep on pressing the tab to select the required options. And you can see that it has also provided me an if statement to check the operation and print an error message if the operator is invalid. And now we are going to call the required functions on the basis of the selected operator. So here is the if the operation is plus, this will happen. Else if the operation is minus, then this will happen. Else if the operator is multiplication sign, then this will happen. Else if the operation is division, then this is going to happen. Else we are going to print invalid operation. And then it is also provided me an option to call the main function. So I'm going to do that as well. And in this way, you can see that in just a matter of few minutes, we were able to develop code for a calculator application in Python. And we didn't really have to write a single line of code. I simply provided it this prompt in the form of a command that I wanted to be a calculator that can add, subtract, multiply and divide. And then all of these functions along with the main, the options for selection and the conditions were auto generated by the GitHub Copilot. Now let's go ahead and run this to see if the project or if the application is working fine or not. So it is asking me to enter a number. I'm going to enter five. Then it is asking me to enter another number. I'm going to say six. And then we have to add the operator. So I'm going to pass the multiplication operator. So it says that five into six is 30. So it is working fine. Okay. So you can see that the GitHub Copilot generated all the code for us. And we simply have to write that what is going to happen inside this file. So in this way, it has made the programming pretty easy and pretty fast for us. So let's say that I also want to have unit testing of this code. So once again, I'm going to add the comments here and I'm going to say unit testing of this application. All right. Now, once I come down, it is going to show me options that firstly, I want to import the unit testing. Then it is going to tell me to class to add the class test file that is going to take the unit test dot test case and its parameter. And then these are all the test cases for the different functions. So if you want to select these, you simply have to click on tab and you can see that in order to test the add function, we have these three cases. And then for the subtract, we have these three test cases, same as the case for multiplication. And there are four different cases for division. Then when you come in the main, it is going to show you to call the unit test.main function inside which all of these are present. So now let's go ahead and run the application again. So it is asking me to enter the number. I'm going to say three. Then for another number, I'm going to say four. Then I'm going to pass subtraction as the operator. And you can see that this is the result of my subtraction that 3 minus 4 is equal to minus 1 and then it ran 4 tests in 0.0, .0 seconds and gave us the status OK. This means that all the unit tests that we've created for the subtraction function have successfully passed. So in this way, in just a matter of few minutes, we were able to generate the entire code for the calculator application and also generate the test cases for the unit testing of the application as well. And this was possible only through the GitHub Copilot. 
I'm going to add a new file and I'm going to call it app.py. In this file, I want to create a Streamlit application. So firstly, I'm going to install the Streamlit using the command pip install Streamlit. And you will see that our Streamlit will start downloading. And after a few minutes, it will be successfully installed. So now in this application, I want to have code for a Streamlit app which is going to be a conversational app just like chat GPT. So here, once again, I'm going to add the comments. So here in the comments, I'm telling it that it is a streamlit application having a text box for taking prompt from the user, a generate response button to capture the prompt and a subheader under generate response button that will display the response of the prompt. So now let's see if the GitHub Copilot is able to generate an application like this or not. So firstly, it is asking me to import the streamlet. Okay, I'm going to do that. Okay, so it is asking me to import OpenAI, but I want the front end only. So here, so here I'm going to add streamlet application front end. Okay, so now I think it will not give me the option for the OpenAI. Now it is asking me to import the pandas. I'm going to do that. NumPy. So now it is giving me the suggestion to create a title. I'm going to do that. Then it is giving me a subheader to enter your prompt here. And it is also creating a text area. So I'm going to go with that. Then on its own, it is providing me an option to create a button. So I'm going to go with it. Then it is creating a button here using st.button. So I'm going to go ahead and with it, it is also checking that if the button is clicked, then we are going to create a new subheader that will say response. And we are going to write all of this text here. But it is a repetition. So I'm going to remove all of this. All right. So this looks good for now. We have a title that says GPT-3 Playground. I'm going to say chatbot. Okay. Then we have a subheader that says enter your prompt here under which we have a text area. Inside it, we already have some predefined text. Then we are generating a button. And if the button is clicked, then we are creating a subheader that says response. And this code is actually fulfilling all the requirements that we added in the comments about what this application will be all about. So now let's go ahead and run this to see how our application actually looks like. So I'm going to say streamlit run and app.py. So it is going to show me that application is running on this board. I'm going to click on open in browser. Okay, so here we have the title, which is GPT-3 chatbot. Then we have a sub here that says enter your prompt here. Then we have a text box inside which there is already the text, which we can always remove and enter our text. Then we have a button to generate the response. And if I click on it, then it is going to show me the response, which we have set upon the button click. So you can see that in this way, you can quickly create an easy front end for your streamlit application simply by providing what you want inside your application front end. And GitHub Copilot is actually going to create the front end just like that for you. Now I'm going to close it and create a new file. I'm going to call it reverse.py. And in this file, I want the GitHub Copilot to generate the code for me in order to reverse a string. So once again, I'm going to add the comments here to describe what is going to happen inside this file. So I'm going to say take a string as input from the user, count the number of characters in it, reverse the string and print it. So I want this file to have all of these functions. Now let's see how the GitHub Copilot suggests us to write the code. So firstly, it is providing me the suggestion to have the input from the user. So I'm going to go with that suggestion. So it is going to use the input function. Then it is providing me to count the number of characters in the string. I'm going to go with its suggestions. So it is using the length function. Then it is showing the suggestion to reverse the string. I'm going to go with the suggested options. It is joining the reverse string and it is now printing the reverse string. But there is a small mistake that there is a hash sign beside all of this. So if we want to have the code, so I'm going to remove the hash sign from the lines that are actually going to perform the operation. So in short, this is our code. Firstly, it is taking input from the user by saying enter a string. So the user's input will be stored inside a variable called string. Then we have to count the number of characters in it so that it is printing that length of the string is. And for it, it is using the built-in length function and passing the string inside it. Then we asked it to reverse the string and print it. So firstly, it is reversing the string using the reverse function. So here it says that string dot join reverse string. So here, if you don't want this solution, you can always go ahead and remove this. And when you see the suggestion again, over upon it and press control enter. And it is going to open the GitHub Copilot suggestions for the reverse.py. 
and you will see a list of suggestions from which you can select so first is the suggestion that was auto generated and these are all other suggestions so you can use the join with the reverse string function you can simply call the reverse string and store it inside a variable called reverse string so all of these are almost the same so this one was the simplest i'm gonna copy it from here and i'm gonna paste it inside my code all right now the only thing that was left was to print the reverse string okay so here it is printing the original string and then after that it is printing the reverse string which is this one so now let's see if this is working correctly or not so i'm gonna run the file by saying python reverse dot pi hit enter okay so it is saying that there is an indentation error so now let's try another thing i'm gonna press ctrl i and here i'm gonna prompt it to manage the indentation of this code and then i'm gonna hit enter and it is gonna show me that what are the issues in the indentation so this is my code and this is the code that it is suggesting with the correct indentation so you have the option to accept it or discard it i'm gonna accept it now let's see if the application runs fine or not so i'm gonna say python reverse dot by hit enter and yeah it is asking us to enter a string so i'm gonna pass today is friday hit enter and it is going to show me that the length of the string is 15 the original string is today's friday and the reverse string is this one so you can see that the github copilot generated all of the code for us by simply looking at this comment that we provided at the start of the file and it wrote all the comment for us along with giving us suggestions to improve the code and there were multiple suggestions in order to do a single thing and you can select from those multiple suggestions and in addition to it we were able to solve our indentation issues using the github copilot as well now i'm going to create a new file in order to test github copilot for html so here is my html file and i'm going to show you that i won't write even a single line of code and still the basic structure of an html file along with some styling will be created for me so firstly i'm simply gonna add this symbol and it will suggest me to add the doc type so once i select the doc type now it is giving me suggestion that the next step is the html tag so i'm gonna select it inside the html tag it is giving me an option to add a head tag i'm gonna go with it inside it we have a title then it is asking me to close the head tag then it is suggesting me to add the body tag so i'm gonna go with its suggestions and this is the basic structure of an html page now i'm gonna change a few things firstly in place of h1 i'm gonna say testing copilot then we have a paragraph for the text now if i want to add some styling i'm gonna add a comment here inside it i'm gonna say an inline style to have paragraph in red color so i am not gonna write the code on my own i simply added this comment and now on the next line it is providing me the suggestion where we have a paragraph tag and the style is the color and the value is red so here we will say testing the inline styling then if you want to have an ordered list then you can also do it by simply adding a comment so i'm gonna do that i'm gonna say an unordered list of fruits hit enter and it will provide you the code in order to generate the unordered list then if you want to add a table so it is also giving me the prompt for a comment that a table with three rows and two columns so i'm gonna go with the suggestion and now it is going to give me the code to create a table with three rows and two columns and this is the dummy data which is present inside it now if you want to add a hyperlink then it is also providing me the option to do that so i'm going to go with the suggestions you can see that i am not writing even a single line of code everything is being done on the basis of the suggestions which the github copilot is giving to me then we have a form with a text input and a submit button i'm going to go with it we have a form a submit button and we also have a placeholder for it then there is a script tag to load a javascript file i'm gonna go with it then there is a div with a class of container i'm gonna go with the suggestions and then in the end we'll see how our html page is looking like okay so i think this is fine so all of this code was created by github copilot itself i simply passed this doc type html and all the other tags and all the attributes were 
created by GitHub Copilot on its own. So this is the code for a HTML page. So now let's go ahead and run the application to see how our HTML page looks like. So in order to open it inside my browser tab, I'm going to firstly run this command. And once this is successfully executed, I'm going to write HTTP server. Then it is going to show me that the application is running on port 8080. I'm going to click on open in browser. And you can see this is how our page looks like. This is the heading then this is the p tag with the inline styling for changing the font color to red then we have an unordered list here is a table then we have an image of the cat we have a hyperlink to redirect us to the google we have a text box and a submit button and all of these things were created by the github copilot on its own which didn't really write even a single write of code to generate all of this so that's a really cool thing and in this way you can use GitHub Copilot to write code in any of the language that you want simply by providing it the right prompt or defining what you're going to do in the file at the start of the file in the form of a command. And then GitHub Copilot will start suggesting you on the basis of those comments which you have added at the start of your file. And in this way, your programming speed will significantly increase and you will finish your work in much lesser time. There are many features of the GitHub Copilot, which I am not discussed in this video. So I'm going to highly encourage you to explore all of these options on your own and get benefits from this AI assistant, which is embedded inside the GitHub code spaces.